bust open a cap mold and drizzle those colors. Cause today we're gonna make Petri dives. Ooh. Welcome back to the Garage Quest shop, everyone. Today, I wanted to show you how to make these gorgeous rainbow dice, which are made through the Petri method. So let's get started. First of all, you're gonna mix up some resin. I'm using amazing Alumalite clear cast. And I'm gonna mix up a little bit less than I normally would for a full set of dice. This is because we're only going to be pouring the molds three quarters of the way full to begin with. Now, you are gonna wanna use something called a cap mold. It's a different style of mold um, than sprue molds, and it looks like this. Mine's in a adorable little heart, there you go. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour my clear resin in three quarters of the way full, leaving just a little bit of space so that we can come back to this tomorrow and pour more resin into the mold. But for now, just pour it three quarters of the way full and I'm just gonna rush through the tape here so we can get this done and then we'll be on to uh, our waiting period. Now it should look like this and we're just gonna wait 20 minutes or until it gets thick and syrupy. You can use a toothpick test like I'm doing here to just stick it in their mold and pull out the resin and see that it's thick and syrupy. And that means we're ready to color. So I've pulled out one color for every color of the rainbow here and I'm just putting a little bit of that ink into each individual cup. I'm using opaque Let's Resin inks, but you can use whatever inks you like. And then of course I'm putting white into a cup as well and putting toothpicks into each of those cups. And now I'm ready to begin. So I'm starting with the red because why not? And I'm just using a toothpick to scoop up the tiniest drop of red ink and touch down in one corner of the mold to the resin. And uh, I generally do this about five or six times uh, before I move on to the next mold, just so you want it to look like it's a little bit heavy resting on the surface of the resin because that means it's more likely to drop as it cures which provides the effect we want. Um, I've zoomed in here so you can get a better look at exactly how much of the resin dye is going in and now I'm just going to go ahead and move through each mold with my dye. I should mention here that it's really important to shake your opaque resin colors. Um, some of these seemed to separate in the cup a little bit. And because of that, some of these colors like this orange, which was very well mixed, rested very heavily with only a few drops. And because of that, I used less of it. Um, and other colors like the green and the blue, you'll see they came out a little thin and I wish now that I had used more of that ink um, because they just didn't look as thick and heavy as the red and orange did and it showed in the results. So now I'm going to go ahead and just put in these colors and as you put in each color, the goal is to place the color beside the previous color, but ideally it doesn't quite touch. And that's simply just because you don't want your colors to mix. We have so many colors going on in this dice that um, we always risk everything blending and sort of becoming a, a nasty brown, and that's not what we're going for. But don't be too worried if some of the colors blend a little bit. That's okay. Um, we are going to. Um, let this cure for a good amount of time and ideally they'll drop at different speeds and not mix too completely. So now after we've put all the colors in, we're gonna take just a little bit of the white, opaque white resin dye and place a few drops on the surface of each dye. So you can set them right in the middle of each color if you like. Uh, I typically find there's only room for about four or five drops of white on the surface. Um, but if you can get seven in there, 
more power to you. Uh, I will say, though, you do not want to overdo it with the white because the whole reason we're putting white in there is because of how heavy it is. So you don't want it to just sink to the bottom immediately. Now uh, you'll get something that looks a little bit like this, and we're ready to put this into the pressure pot and wait for about 12 hours. Okay, so it's been 12 hours, and now we're ready to mix up a little bit more resin. Again, not a full set of dice worths, just a little bit, because now we're gonna pour that into the rest of the molds, filling it all the way to the top and then some. So as you watch me pour here, you'll notice that I don't just fill it, I let there be a little bit extra resin sitting on top of each mold. And the reason for that is there are no designated reservoirs inside of the cap mold the way there are with sprue molds. So we have to make sure to over pour so that it'll fill in any bubbles that occur. So now I'm just placing the lid to my cap mold into the keys that have been carved into the mold and I gently press it down on top of the mold. There's a little bit of spillage out the seams. That's okay. I just clean it up. And, and last but not least, it goes into a pressure pot for 24 hours. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on making Petri dice. Be sure to subscribe. And thanks for watching.